Chuck Asbell says he'll never forget his very first heart call as a new paramedic. I just knew what the next step was going to be. Uh, but I also remember that deep-seated feeling of, you know, excitement and adrenaline of, okay, let's get to the hospital. This guy needs further help than what I can give him. And now, more than six years later, Asbel says he's responded to more heart calls than he can count. And in this simulation, he shows how the ambulance brings the emergency room to the heart patient. Just have a seat right there for us. In the ambulance, medics hook the patient up to a heart monitor and take an EKG. Sir, I'm just going to take a quick look to see what's going on, okay? The results immediately go to the emergency room. My main goal in this situation is to decrease pain as much as I possibly can and work as quickly as I can to find out, is this a cardiac episode? Is it a heart attack? And if it's a confirmed heart attack, the patient is rushed to the Coliseum Medical Center or one of our cath labs here at the Georgia Heart Center. Lab manager Brandy Miller says the ambulance gives the hospital a head start. They can alert all the appropriate people here in our facility so that we can get the team ready, get the room ready. She says they inject a dye into the bloodstream and take x-rays. This camera actually is going all around the patient taking pictures. Then they clear the blockage. We will place wires and catheters down into the vessel, remove clot from that artery, and put in what we call stents, or use a balloon technique to open up that blood flow back to the heart. Asbel says heart muscle starts dying three to five minutes after a clot blocks blood flow. By calling for an ambulance, by dialing 911, you are saving an hour's worth of muscle. That's what you're doing. But he says people, including children, need to start watching out for their heart early before an emergency happens. We're number one in the state of Georgia and number two in the nation for childhood obesity. Yeah, I mean, that has a, has a huge impact on you because what you're seeing there is these are people that we'll be picking up in 15, 20 years. You know, these kids that aren't learning the proper way to take care of their body and the proper way to exercise and the proper way to eat, are they're going down that road, they're going down that path that's going to lead to heart disease. Now sometimes when you, the bystander, is the first line of defense in an emergency, uh, we have Andrew Woodward, also a paramedic from Mid-Georgia Ambulance, here to show us that that idea might not be as intimidating as it sounds. And Andrew, what do we have here in front of us? Well, this here's a mannequin, right? Represents the person. CPR can be done easily no matter who you are. It used to be a little bit more difficult, but we've come out with a new uh, type of CPR called hands-only CPR, right? The concept is that by compressing on the chest, you not only compress the heart, but the lungs as well. Mm -hmm. So you're breathing for them and beating the heart for them. To do this, you want to use the heel of your hand in the center of the chest, directly above the breastbone, found by using a nose to navel and nipple nipple line. Okay. Where that meets is where you push. You want to push down about two inches, and we do this at a rate of 100 beats a minute. To keep beat, you can use the song Staying Alive. Well, you can tell by the way I use my walk, I'm a woman's man. That's very you know easy that song? to remember, right, exactly. You just keep that going. All you want to do is that 100 times a minute, uh, pushing in two inches in the chest, and this is going to keep oxygen going to the brain. That's the purpose of CPR. Okay. It won't jump start the heart, though. That's where we have the AED. This is an automated external defibrillator. These are in all public places now. Where they're in the malls. Uh, government buildings, schools are having them. Okay. Some of them, as soon as you open it up, it'll start talking to you. But most of them will talk. They're all easy to use. This has three steps. One, two, three. And the steps are color coordinated. Step one is turning it on. As soon as you turn it on. Okay, easy enough. <laughs> it'll start talking to all you. Right. The volume's down, but it talks to you. Now, you want to hook the pads up to your AED. The pads are diagrammed telling you exactly what to do. All right. It says this one you put right there. And does it also this talk one you, put you through here. To, to tell you Absolutely. where to put the pads? Okay. It has a flashing light, tells you to hook up the connector to that spot. Now the important uh, thing to note, when you hook these up, uh -huh. you want to stay back. That's why there's a long cord. Because there is an electrical shock that will save his life, but you don't want any of it, okay? <laughs> All for him. So, and if the patient is wet, you need to dry them off. Electricity and water don't mix. Okay. Know what I mean? You have so to that's bear one their thing chest. to remember. Absolutely. And it, it gets even easier. Here, there's an iPhone app now Absolutely. that talks you through this whole if process. If you ever forget what to do, we have iPhone apps to help you. But just remember, even if you don't have an iPhone, if you call us, we can help, right? Well, that, that's great, Andrew. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you.